Hello, my name is Jerry Neese, and I work to build a world beyond war in Concord, California. My professional background is in marketing and sales, so it's only natural to be interested in how people adopt ideas, how ideas move through society. There's a large amount of data available on this process, and I'd like to share some of it with you. This is the innovation decision process based on work done by Dr. Everett Rogers at Stanford University. And it's essentially a six-step process. The first step is the attention step, in which people for the first time gain, this, gain an awareness or an understanding of a new innovation. They are primarily exposed to this new innovation through the media, rather than the face-to-face -face contact with people. And it's a very cognitive process at this stage. It's important to note that people must feel a need to adopt a new idea, must see the advantage of it before they move through any of these other states. The interest step is the next step, in which people for the first time develop a favorable or an unfavorable attitude about the innovation. They tend to seek information at this stage from interpersonal sources, from face-to-face -face contact with their friends and other people, rather than through the media. And this is a more emotional step. There's a lot more emotion involved in actually deciding about the innovation. They next reach the evaluation step in which they compare the new innovation with their existing values and beliefs and norms. And they try it on for fit to see how it feels. At this stage, it's important to see into the future, to see how if they adopt this new innovation, how it will look at some time in the future. Next, we reach the trial stage in which people actually have a probationary adoption of the idea. They could go either way at this stage. They try it out. They see how it feels for them. It's very important for the early adopters of an innovation to have this trial stage, to be able to break down the large, large decision into a number of smaller steps. Finally, we reach the adoption stage, in which, pe in which people actually make the decision to adopt or reject the idea. And of course, in our case, we hope they adopt the idea. And at this stage, the idea is actually now incorporated into their belief system or their norms. Recently, the research has added a sixth step, which seems to be the most important, and that is the stage of confirmation. At this stage, individuals seek reassurance that they have made the right decision, and they seek this reassurance from the people that introduced them to the innovation in the first place, from the media, from their friends, from their family. Now let's talk about some factors which affect the rate of adoption of an innovation. Dr. Rogers points out five perceived attributes that affect the rate of adoption. These being relative advantage, compatibility, complexity, trialability, and observability. Relative advantage is the degree to which the new innovation provides a better idea over the individual's existing ideas or norms or values. Compatibility is the degree to which the existing values are compatible with what the individual currently believes. Complexity is the degree to which the new innovation is difficult to understand or communicate to others. And the key implication for us here and beyond war is we must make the message as simple as possible for people to understand. The fourth, trialability, is the degree to which the new innovation can be trialed on a limited basis by people. And as we mentioned earlier, this is very important for the earlier adopters. Lastly, observability is the degree to which the results of adopting the innovation are observable to others so that they can, in turn, can adopt the ideas based on seeing other people having adopted them. There's another area affecting the rate of adoption, and this is the area of crises versus preventative innovations. Research has shown that if the innovation deals with a crisis, it is adopted much faster than if it deals with a preventative innovation. And essentially what we're talking about in Beyond War is such a preventative innovation. The problem with preventative innovations is people cannot see the immediacy of the concern, and therefore they're much slower to adopt. The implication for us here in Beyond War is to show people that it is not a preventative innovation, but rather is a crisis innovation, and thus is one which they should adopt immediately. This chart shows that innovations are adopted over a period of time. Research has shown that there are five distinct categories of people involved in the adoption of an innovation. Those being innovators, which represent about 2.5% of the population, early adopters, 
which represent about 13.5% of the population, the early majority, which represent 34%, the late majority, which represent another 34%, and finally, the late adopters, which finally represent about 16% of the population. Innovators are known as very venturesome or risk-taking people. They're very mobile, they get out, they travel a lot, and they tend to bring back ideas back into their local community. They receive a lot of their information from the media, and they have a lot of contact with people outside their immediate peer group, for example, in their businesses, in their schools, and in their churches. Most importantly, perhaps, though, research has shown that innovators have the ability to perceive abstract ideas and grasp them without knowing what's on the other side. In other words, they can make a decision without knowing what the result will be. The early adopters, the word that describes them is respectable, and they are your local opinion leaders. They act as role models for these groups here below them. And they are the ones that conform most closely to the norms of the society in which they exist. Their important role is that they act as the bridge between innovators and the rest of these groups. The early majority, which represents a full third of the population, is a very deliberate group. In other words, they will not adopt an idea right off the bat, but in fact will look to the role model, the early adopter, and see how they react to the innovation before adopting it themselves. They interact a lot with peers and receive their information from face-to-face -face or interpersonal contact with people. The late majority is a very skeptical group of people, and they must receive a lot of pressure from their peers before they adopt the idea. And finally, the late adopters are a very traditional group. Their reference point is in the past, and they may never, in fact, adopt the idea. But more importantly, I think, we should look at the roles these people play. And there are two primary roles, the role of change agent and the role of opinion leader. The change agent is a group in society which takes the idea and communicates it to others. The opinion leader is the group in society which acts as the role model and takes the idea from the change agent and then spreads it to the rest of society. And the implication for us here in Beyond War is we've got to find these early adopters these opinion leaders and carry the idea to them so that they, in fact, can then carry the idea to the rest of the population. In conclusion, then, I'd like to show you one more chart which summarizes some of the things we've talked about here. This chart symbolizes the diffusion effect. In other words, how an idea diffuses through society. On the left-hand axis here, we have the rate of adoption, the 5% when an idea becomes embedded in society, the 20%, for example, when an idea is unstoppable. And across the bottom axis, we have the rate or percentage of awareness or knowledge of an innovation. I think the important implications here for us are that until a certain minimum threshold of awareness or knowledge about the concept of beyond war is reached, the level of adoption will be very, very small. And when we reach that 50 or 60 percent level, when the local opinion leaders start to take over the idea for us and carry it out into society, is when we finally reach that 20% level of adoption when an idea then becomes unstoppable. And also important is the fact of the confirmation step we talked about earlier. It's very important to continue to educate ourselves on the principles of beyond war and to follow up effectively with those people we contact. And I think if we remember these findings, we can work more effectively to build a world beyond war. Thank you.